Oh my god, this is without a doubt the best boss debut in Warframe yet to date. And guys, this is no joke. It was all somewhat kept a small secret in how to actually find the tier 4 version of the fragmented one. So, let me go ahead and walk you through on how to get it and what it gives. This begins like all good things begin. The steel path and an assassination mission. For the sake of those who have never done the mission before, let's do a really fast rundown on what's actually happening. The concept of this mission is to find and grab the Atropos probe planted somewhere within the Tulsa. And when you grab it, you want to go and head over to the new directional marker and inject it into the Vitrium. So what the Vitrium does from here is that it will now begin seeking out timed murmur eyes for us to collect in a similar fashion to what is an already existing game mode like void flood however we don't have to deposit anything once we collect these eyes the vitrium has quite a big duration in between each time it can go ahead and begin a new seek but it can be lowered unfortunately i'm not 100 sure as to how to lower it i've had inconsistent results so if you do know the consistent result could you please let me know inside the comment section below and i'll be very thankful however once it is low enough and it begins seeking again the gist is is that it will keep seeking eyes and you'll keep collecting them until the vitrium is exhausted in which it will then go ahead and relocate and you basically build the process up again once you've collected the 30 murmur eyes what you're supposed to now go ahead and do is head over to the boss fight it lovely jubbly however there is a slight detail in the announcer's voice the fish Fenabachi. I believe he has a few different dialogue lines here, but in one of them, he states that if we keep searching and inject another probe into another vitrium, he cannot blame us on what is about to go and happen. So we actually want to keep collecting Murmur Eyes up to a maximum of 60 Murmur Eyes in total. And well, that just reveals the boss's true form. Fragmented Steel Path level 300 boss is absolutely no joke. When I tell you how underprepared we were the first time we went in there, we had DE people in my Twitch stream laughing at us, saying good luck. This boss has some very interesting and scary mechanics added to the fight, so let's have a little talk about what is actually happening and what you can expect. So the beginning process is usual. If you've never seen this before, you want to go and kill some enemies until the boss basically forms. So when you've done that and the boss has been summoned, the boss will now have two health bars located above, and each health bar is a completely different phase. As of right now, it takes a long time to go through one phase please go and keep this in mind he will eat your damage for the next couple of days and weeks until we can figure out what is best in slot against him so here's what you can expect within phase one the boss can hit you with magnetic damage and procs but even more so he can strip you off any buffs that you have applied to you at that time an example would be oh i'll go in with revenant warframe pop up my mesmer skin what's he gonna do to me yeah the boss will just deny you and say nope so I already like the start of this. This adds a level threat to not reading his animations correctly for which ability he is about to go and do. So if you get hit by it, you will definitely feel the weight and punishment of this boss more. From there, every down that you take with your Warframe, your down state timer gets shorter each and every time. We saw it reach just a maximum of four seconds overall that a teammate will need to go ahead and res you in. Now, this is extremely important because this boss fight is similar to the Archon Hunts. Yeah, that basically means one death and you're out. No rewards for you. You will have to re and restart the mission if you do die, and you'll also probably be having to rethink your build that you're bringing in. So the boss can go and use his arm simultaneously to go ahead and do a clockwise and counterclockwise magnetic beam attack in which will be rotating around his body. I cannot express how many times people were caught out to this because it's pretty instant and it's a very short animation for you to go ahead and detect it. This is definitely one of the moves that you will least expect. During phase one, the boss can also summon lasers that will track and target onto every player involved. After a few seconds, it will shoot out a beam causing big magnetic damage as well. Try to be aware of your allies when this happens or if you want to have a little cheeky troll. He has a few other movesets with close attacks, some charges, and even like a path of arms that he leaves scattered across the ground, causing stagger to those who come into contact with it. But for now, that's a rough idea of what's going on in the first phase. Let's go talk about his second phase. Raiding from the sky, the boss can summon projectiles out of a ball-like ability, causing airborne traffic to those who are already up there. Good luck with that. You can also expand a globe coming out of him, in which, in order to damage him during this mechanic, you will need to be within the globed area. 
you cannot shoot him from outside. During all of this, the globe is going to shrink over time and it's going to go and push away players as it explodes on finish. Everything the boss did in phase one, I believe he can also go ahead and do in phase two as well. But more importantly, he gains fragmented stacks that increase his damage, which tick every 60 seconds, adding more stacks to him. This gives an element of a damage check in mind. Either you kill him or over time, he's going to be killing you. So there are a few extra mechanics that he does go ahead and do and a few extra attacks like burying underground and then leaping at a player. But this is just more for a showcase. I think I've covered the more important ones for you to go ahead and acknowledge. Looking at the boss, we can also see these circular balls in area connecting joints like his arms or tail. And in other areas, they are centered within his chest. Now, we believe this is going to be his weak spot. If you go ahead and shoot it with an Ikana weapon, you can also go and gain charges from it. That's what kind of gave that away. Now, guys, I may be in the honeymoon phase with this update, but to me, I love being competitive and I'm always looking for the next thing we could potentially add to building and rebuilding the idea of end game content within Warframe. And yes, yes, I get it. It's not for everyone, but for me, it is and it's optional. So you don't have to like it. Just don't pressure others into thinking otherwise. I want more concepts like this and I welcome them with open arms. Now, when all of that is said and done and you finally whittled the boss down to his last breath, you are rewarded with two things. The first thing you're rewarded with is the Manis Sumdali. You can go ahead and add this pair of murmur hands to the front of your ship and in some cases the top and maybe even side of your ship it just depends which ship you're using you can go ahead and use this for bragging rights well at least for now not everyone is going to have these and some may not even care for them but it makes it more of a unique optional reward to go ahead and get and it's definitely quite a challenge and number two, the boss will also go ahead and drop one of the new melee arcanes that came within the Whispers in the Wall update. However, he drops all of them except from the legendary ones as of right now. It is a good way to go and help you farm those arcanes if you are interested in farming them out right now. So then, I'm sure that you're going to be needing a build for all of that, right? Okay, well, let me just quickly say three things. Overguard, Dispensary, Reservoir. See, the moment we played with and without these, we noticed it. It was quite a day and night difference. And by all means, everything has a meta. Eidolons, Orb Mothers, and even the Plague Star Hema site. Well, these seem to be fitting quite nicely into this fight. So if you don't know what's going to bring, start off here. Up on the screen is the Styanax build that I was using to go and farm the boss today for my Arcanes. And to go ahead and put the build briefly, the main thing that you're going to want to be going for is this Overguard Augment. This is key to helping keep you and your team alive. So reality this is actually more of a support build and being supportive also matches very well with his third ability because i can go and give energy out to the team and i also went ahead and subsumed in rhino's roar but that was mostly to go and cover any lacking damage that either myself or a teammate didn't have which now provides this build with three abilities to bring towards a team environment Mind you, my playstyle was very aerial, so you're going to be wanting to get up nice and high and try not to get caught by those magnetic procs. Just keep your team alive and believe me, they will 100% notice the difference between playing with an overguard support player and without an overguard support player. Now, as for my weapon, I personally went with the old reliable Burst of the Incarnate, covering mostly raw damage, critical and radiation as that is the element this boss is weakest against. Whatever weapon that you go ahead and find to be better, please go ahead and grab it. This is just an example of what we used today and in fairness the person did a good job everything else that i use today i'm probably not going to end up bringing into this video because you see over time we're going to go ahead and find out what the better builds are we just need a couple more days and weeks to go ahead and really unravel all of the information that we need to make this mission a lot quicker and a lot more accurate in terms of what we need to go invest our builds into so do go and keep in mind that there is a new clan operation around the corner next week and if all things are going as planned this might just be a taste of what is to expect so then guys i'm gonna go and keep this video as short and as to the point as i can if you enjoyed the video hit it with a cheeky like and share the video with someone who may also want to know more about this come subscribe to the channel if you are new and i'll be catching you guys again in the next video